This visit of His Holiness the Dalai Lama illustrates the important role of universities in exploring issues that are of profound importance and consequence to human life, society, and the world at large. At the University of Minnesota, this visit has prompted a series of conversations and presentations, including a policy dialogue at the Humphrey School of Public Affairs on the Tibetan community in exile, an art exhibit at the, at the Boynton Health Service on traditional Tibetan medicinal plants, a film preview by the School of Me Music on Tibetan music and culture, and a conference on Tibetan medicine hosted by the Center for Spirituality and Healing. The strong response to this visit illustrates the character of the University of Minnesota, one that is collaborative, interdisciplinary, and committed to com meaningful partnerships with the community, which is why the Center for, for Spirituality and Healing was such a special or such a perfect host for this event. The center has relationships and programmatic ties across the entire campus, as well as very strong partnerships with community organizations. This visit is particularly relevant to the research interests of the Center for Spirituality and Healing. Faculty in the center have been conducting research on mind-body practices such as meditation for more than 10 years. Recent clinical trials have found that meditation is as effective as drugs in treating insomnia. People who have had an organ transplant and who practice mindful medita meditation are less anxious and depressed and have a better quality of life. And meditation can improve the experience of being a caregiver of someone diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Your Holiness, we are deeply honored and grateful that you have returned to our campus. And we know that this community, home to the second largest population of Tibetans in the United States, is very important to you. The University of Minnesota Board of Regents is awarding you the Doctorate of Humane Letters. This is the highest award given by the University of Minnesota, and it is only bestowed on individuals who have attained outstanding accomplishments in their field. Your nomination was unique. In addition, in addition to authoring more than 70 books, you have had a global impact on so many fields. Spirituality and ethics, neuroscience, Buddhism, human rights, environmental protection, and peace, just to name a few areas of, of your interest and the reach of your work. You've also been awarded both the United States Congressional Gold Medal and the Nobel Peace Prize, an achievement shared by our beloved alumnus, Dr. Norman Borlaug, and matched by very, very few people in the entire world. Your presence here at the University of Minnesota and internationally cultivates peace, and it is our distinct honor to award you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Your Holiness, I would like you to join us at the, at the podium. Uh, uh, Regent uh, Clyde Allen will join me in conferring the degree, and I'd like to begin by reading the official citation. University of Minnesota, Dr. of Humane Letters, native of Toxter Amdo, T. 
temporal and spiritual leader of Tibet and its government in exile, 1950 to the present. Recipient of the Girsha Lamrapa degree honors. Jokong Temple, Lhasa, 1959. Author of a draft Democratic Constitution, 1963, and a five-point peace plan, 1987, for Tibet. Proponent of scientific research through the Mind and Life Institute, 1987 to the present. Nobel Peace Prize recipient, 1989. Initiator of the first direct democratic elections for a representative Tibetan government, 1992 and 2001. Author of more than 72 books, including the New York Times bestseller, The Art of Happiness. Recipient of the Congressional Gold Medal in 2007. Founder of the Dalai Lama Trust to support the welfare of the Tibetan people and preserve their culture and heritage, 2009 to the present. Because you demonstrate with quiet determination, a compassionate heart, and a curious mind, even the path of a simple Buddhist monk can lead to a place of global understanding and deep purpose because your teachings reveal all that we share, from the fundamental desire for happiness and freedom to the impact that we have on our planet. Because you remind us that peace is attained not simply when wars cease, but when basic human needs are met and basic human rights are respected. And because your embrace of scientific inquiry into the life of the mind has illuminated the symbolic relationship between health and well-being, inspiring the commitment of the University of Minnesota to transform the delivery of health care, not only through research and clinical innovation, by all, but also by advancing understanding of how diverse cultural beliefs and healing practices can improve, can improve human health and the human condition. The Regents of the University of Minnesota, upon recommendation of the faculties, confer upon Tenzin Gyatso, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters honoris causa, conferred on May 8, 2011, signed Ann Cieslak, Executive Secretary of the Board of Regents, Robert H. Brunick's President, Clyde Allen, Chair of the Board of Regents. Thank you. 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 Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. I think all of you know that His Holiness is very fond of visor caps, and so we also want to add to the uh, distinction of this honorary degree a very special symbol of a visor from the University of Minnesota, the Golden Gophers. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It looks, it looks very good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm going to let you leave me. Let you leave me. Yes. I speak here, from here. Come on, my theory.
Lujimar Bey. Larry. Chancellor, I mean, respected Chancellor President. of this. Uh, Pre President. President at this, I should say, I think, famous great university, Minnesota, sorry. Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> so, now, I have to confirm so these names, these different sort of thing, uh, my mind is not very because of that. Good at details. Uh, no. not, not, not very reliable. <laughs> the, okay. So, uh, you give me this honorary uh, degree. degree. So, thank you very much. Uh, And I often, you see, telling uh, when I receive this kind of sort of honorary degree, uh, uh, I usually see special thank uh, the sort of high degree of uh, university, uh, university sort of, uh, degree, but myself without much sort of study. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the ordinary people, in order to get that kind of degree, you say you need a lot of effort. <laughs> <laughs> and then special thank for this head. Uh, whenever there's a strong light there, I usually you see carry one sort of cap. Oh. But without you see this, because of the Gandhi. Without, without the top part. No. Yeah. The top part, and cold climate, very good. But hot climate, you see, too hot. So now this is very good. <laughs> then also sometimes I notice, you see, some people, oh, who bold or bold head. bold head. Sometimes some people, you see, prefer one hat. So I do not want to hide, you see, my sort of boldness. Yeah. <laughs> so this is also very good. You can see. <laughs> Shining hat. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So, after 10 years, once more, I'm here. And each, so each time, people really showing genuine human warm feeling. I very much appreciate that. And my side also, whenever I meet people, no matter what their culture, no matter what their faith, or their nationality, or their color. I always see emphasis, the fundament, importance of fundamental level. The fundamental level, we are same human being. Uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, we are same. And also more important, everyone, including animals, insects, you see, want sort of peaceful sort of life. Yeah. Do not want disturbances. And everyone have the right uh, to achieve that. So we all have the same right to have happy life, successful life. And then, of course, the education institution, such as this, very, very important, because we human brain, there is great potential, increased knowledge. Uh, so, such as this sort of university, 
I think really tremendous help to grow these potential. Uh, so uh, now here I want one small sort of add. Modern education system, obviously, as far as I know, about 1,000 years ago, in a European continent, separate education institutions started. At that time, the moral, spiritual, ethic side, religious institutions take care and religious institutions take full responsibility to take care about these spiritual side. And also, I think family value. Also, you see, very much emphasis on these values. So at that time, the newly developed, newly established sort of education institution, they care only about brain development, education. So, then time passes. The influence from the church also comparatively little decline. decline. And then the uh, family sort of value also sometimes little term decline. So then the, so the education institution itself now should take care of both brain development or knowledge side and warm heartedness. So here seems to see uh, not adequate pay attention about how to develop, how to keep the compassionate human mind. I think we are in 21st century, now beginning of 21st century. Generally speaking, modern sort of what's the material development and modern education, I think both generally highly developed. However, that not necessarily reduce human problem. For example, 20th century, I think in whole human history, I think the most century, important, important sort of century, uh, during that century, a lot of sort of Experience. Uh, uh, inventions, such as just doing it. Innovations. Uh, innovation, yes, a lot of innovations in the field of science and technology, uh, mainly. And then, uh, also the economy and many other, and education also, you see, much sort of developed. Uh, however, that 20th century, uh, according to some historian, they say within 20th century, the number of people, human beings, who killed through violence, through war or civil war, around 200 millions. I think all these past or several centuries, I think the biggest number casualty through violence, I think biggest number in 20th century. And also, I think as a result of invention, right? invention, technology, science, nuclear weapon also developed. And unfortunately, uh, during Second World War, almost end of the war, two bombs used on human beings. I had the opportunity to visit Hiroshima, Nagasaki, both. 
when I, you see, I, in my previous visit, you know, uh, when I reach the spot, the center of the explosion, that, that sort of terrible sort of what's it, uh, scene. scene um. And also they uh, create small sort of museum. Uh, some watch, one watch, uh, about 10 a.m. Then stop, burned. And one bunch of needle, needles, no? melted, half melted. Then also, my sort of, I think previous visit, I also met some old patient who become sick because of radiation from the nuclear weapon. So, this immense destructive weapon brought on this planet more fear, more anxiety. So, the really marvelous achievement by human brain uh, bring more fear, more anxiety. So what's wrong? Knowledge? Oh, marvelous knowledge. But then, here, the moral principle. Uh, that's that. So therefore, uh, out of our past sort of experience, what we learned. I think now time come, we have to think more how to cultivate and how to sustain a sensible sort of moral or say ethics. ethics. What is the moral ethics? I feel the very word moral related with mind, emotion, not matter. We can't say on, on the basis of matters, moral, difficult. Moral related mental quality. So certainly those mind or emotion or motivation which brings Comfort, happiness, uh, joyfulness, that is the, I feel, moral thing. The motivation or emotion which brings fear, which brings pain, distrust, these are immoral. So we human beings, social animal, our survival, individual survival, the individual may be billionaire, very powerful person, but as a human being, for their survival, they need human community. So that's human nature. We are since nature created as a social animal. So for social animal, genuine cooperation is very essential. Even these small insects or birds or some sort of say, the animals, those what say, the social, social, social animals. Like. Social animals, they have no religion, they have no constitution, no government, but by nature, biological factor, the sense of community work together. Uh, cooperation. and cooperation. So we also, basically, social animal. So we really need cooperation. Now, cooperation, genuine cooperation, uh, cannot develop by force, by money, by power. Genuine cooperation uh, 
entirely based on friendship. Friendship entirely based on trust. Trust based on open-heartedness. If you look other open, uh, honest, speak honest, act honestly, truthfully, uh, that brings trust. Trust brings friendship. Friendship brings genuine harmony, cooperation. So, the, I think basic element for open, openness or trust is warm-heartedness. If you keep here warm-heartedness, consider others just like me, who aren't happy, do not want suffering. So therefore, it is illogical harming others cheating other, lying other. If you receive lie from someone, you feel uncomfortable. Uh, so, according to according our own experience, we must avoid, avoid, avoid any physical action, verbal action, mental action, which brings fear, harm, uncomfortable on other. These are immoral. Physical action, mental action, verbal action, which brings happiness, joyfulness, not only for temporary, but also for long term. These things are moral. So here, irrespective of whether you believe religion or not, different. So now question is, a point is, by nature, we all have the potential. Warm heartedness there. Because we all come from our mother. And we've grown up under mother's sort of tremendous sort of affection. We all have the same sort of experience. That's very, very important. The tremendous of affection at the time of very young age really makes a difference in whole life. Now my own ex little experience, I come from a very remote area, northeast Tibet, northeast part of Tibet. Uh, particular my sort of home, village, very remote, and farm, farmer. Farm. My mother, both parent, illiterate. Uh, however, my mother, very, very kind-hearted. Really, very good mother. So therefore, we, her children, is grown up within that atmosphere. So that, I think, really makes difference. I think immense sort of the effect. effect, impact. Sometimes I jokingly was telling my friend, my mother, so kind to me. And of course, uh, uh, when I was young, I'm uh, the youngest her sort of Child. children. So usually, you see, the ch mother extend love to all, but particularly the younger one, the youngest one. Uh, so that a little spoiled me, I think. <laughs> so the reason, as a villager, uh, the mother usually she carry her sort of children, her child on shoulder. So me too, my mother used to carry me. Then mother so kind to, towards me. So I become a little aggressive. So while I sit on my mo mother's shoulder, I hold my mother's two ear. Uh, when I want to go this direction, I do this. 
in that direction. Go like that. <laughs> if mother uh, not follow that way, then I cry and my leg do that. <laughs> so in any way, I really feel, you see, the certain amount of my sort of warm-heartedness originally come from my mother. So we all come from mother. And then, obviously, if we examine each individual thoroughly, then those individuals outwardly appears more or less although everybody is smart. But in deeper level, those individuals who receive maximum affection from our mother at the young age, in deep insight, much calm much calmer and full of, sort of less fear, sense of security. Those individuals may be very wise, very educated, very famous, but in deep insight, those who receive less affection or even sort of what's the day, uh, abused, abused then in deep insight, some sense of insecurity, cold. So such person, such people, difficult to show other real affection. So their whole life, in deep insight, some sense of lonely, helpless. So that's our common experience. So we all have the potential which we received from our mother and our friends. Then, uh, obviously, when you watch people or family, those family materially may not be very rich, but full of affection, friendship, that family much happier. Then those family, very rich, very powerful, but among family member, a little sort of what's the cold, uh, what's the suspicion or competition, that kind of feeling. Then lack of real sort of affection, trust. I think facilities are very good, but in real human, as the, the level of genuine happiness, genuine sort of satisfaction, they are much less. It's quite obvious. Then more important, the latest scientific finding. I often is telling, uh, uh, one, at one conference, you see, uh, one medical scientist uh, in his sort of uh, presentation, uh, he mentioned uh, those people who often use word I, me, uh, my, like that, often use the word of self. Uh, these people uh, have greater risk of heart attack. <laughs> uh, although he didn't sort of explain and I thought, I sort of think over, over that, uh, uh, then I felt more warm-heartedness, take more sort of, sort of spirit, taking care, taking sort of well-being, concern, well-being of other. That mental attitude automatically opened our heart. And sometimes I describe our inner door open. Through that way, you can easily communicate with other people and easily, bring, easily create friendship. Uh, on the other hand, too much extreme self-centered attitude 
then close your inner door. Difficult to communicate with other people. Then also, when you think only yourself, and you hold your mental sort of outlook become very narrow. And with that sort of narrow sort vision. of uh, vision. vision, even small problem for you appears unbearable. When you think more about well-being of other, and our mind become more wider, wider perspective, wider, wider. wider. Result, even quite serious problem for your own problem appears. Okay, it is bad, it is unfortunate, but still okay, that kind of feeling. Because your attitude wider. So I think that's the reason, you see, too much self-centered sort of thinking. Some more danger of these, like including heart attack, these things, and depression, these things. So therefore, the warm-heartedness, compassionate attitude is the key factor for good health. I think to some extent, I also see, can tell you from my own experience, I think my mental state, comparatively, quite peaceful. Uh, even when passing through some difficult period, uh, comparatively, my mind quite calm. Not because dark, <laughs> yeah. I think quite sharp mind, <laughs> but the in deep insight, the sense of affection, concern, well-being of others. And others also consider as a genuine, truly, as a human brother, sisters. There may be different views, different interests, uh, arguable, right? Yeah. But still, human being. So that kind of sort of attitude really immense help to keep peace of mind. Peace of mind, very, very sort of helpful, helpful. to keep healthy body. So sometimes uh, we call healthy mind, healthy body. So it is not only take care about healthy body for that money or materialistic sort of Facilities, Ka. material facilities. Uh, material, uh, material sort of facility and also uh, education mainly sort of address about material value. Not adequate. Uh, so there must be sort of some sort of what's the day, uh, what's the day? Source, method. Uh, some sort of a project to study about our mind, uh, how to tackle these destructive emotions. Now here, the way promoting this inner value, I usually see, feel three ways. One, theistic religion, concept of God, very powerful to increase they love compassion. The other day, one occasion in Jerusalem, we had some sort of discussions with some teachers. One Jewish teacher told our conference, sometime he sort of, he, he told his student, when you face when you meet some people uh, who usually you get some irritation, then think that person, image of God. It will help. He sort of taught in his class to his student. So among his students, some Palestinians, some Jews. So later, some of the Palestine sort of student told him, oh, after we heard your sort of what's the, uh, advice. the teaching, no. advice, 
we practice when we come across the checkpoints. Uh, checkpoints. The Israeli or the checkpoints. Check post. Usually, you see, they get some sort of complications and little irritation. So then, after listening to that advice, then the think the troublemaker also the image of God. Immense benefit, reduce mental irritation. So like that. So one my Muslim friend, he told me, as a genuine practitioner of Islam, you must extend your love towards entire creatures. Since you respect and love to God or Allah, so you must extend your love towards entire creature of God. Very logical. So, theistic way uh, of approach. Then non-theistic religious tradition, like Buddhism and Jainism, the law of causality, no God, no concept of God or creator, but law of causality. So according to that, if you help other, if you do good thing for other, you get benefit. If you harm other, you get negative consequences. So that way of approach also very helpful to increase sense of concern of others' well-being. Then there must be third way. Since these values, we are not talking about heaven, about hell, about next life. We are not talking that. We are simply talking how be the well-being within this life and family level, community level. Uh, so therefore, uh, the prince, and as I mentioned earlier, first we learn from mother, uh, whether believer or non-believer, different matter, as I mentioned before. So therefore, these values, these moral principles itself is secular. Not, related, not based on religious faith. Of course, all major religious tradition emphasizes importance of these things. And there's a certain method to strengthening these practices, these values. But value itself is just a human nature, a part of human mind, part of human emotion. So since the object itself is, strictly speaking, uh, secular, Nothing to do with religion. Even animal appreciate affection. Animal also have the ability to look after their own youngster with full of sort of caring, affection. These are biological factor, not by religious teaching. So it is something uh, secular. So there, therefore, there should be. The way to promote this also secular way. So as I mentioned earlier, using the fact we come from our mother, and also the use common sense, we notice the affectionate family much happier. But then scientific finding. So use this sort of fact, and then. So develop awareness, importance of these things. And through that way, you can develop conviction. Warm-heartedness is so important for your own well-being. So that's secular way to educate. So therefore, when I use the word secularism, secular does not mean disrespect of religion, but rather respect all religions, and including non-believers. This is not new, but you know, in India, in India, I think out of three civilization, Egyptian civilization, Chinese civilization, then Kazakhstan. 
Jeg har jo også det. Send du valgte sig. Og Indus Valley, så civilization. Out of these three. I think it seems later the Indus Valley civilization developed much more sort of complex about ideas, about sort of philosophical views. So thousand years in India, uh, different sort of philosophical views. One philosophical view is actually nihilism. No God, no next life, no salvation, nothing, except Deidre's life. So that's uh, they call nihilistic school of thought. So the rest of the sort of Indian uh, school. school of thought criticize that nihilistic sort of view. However, the person who holding that, who believe that sort of school of thought refer rishi. Rishi means sage. So respect. So that is India's sort of thousand year old tradition. You have different views. On the level of view, criticize, debate. But as a person, respect, must respect. So one of my Indian friend, the former deputy Indian prime minister, uh, once he told me like that, one of the reasons India very successful about democracy because of that tradition. You always respect different views and criticize each other, but respect. So the India's also the, the, also the understanding about secularism, respect, even non-believer. So that uh, I think very relevant to today's world. So when I use the secularism, please don't think the secular, secularism is something a little bit negative attitude towards religion, not that way, but rather respect. So therefore, third way of promoting this inner value should be logically secular way without touching. Now even sort of secular sort of education system. This kind of sort of approach. Way, kind of approach. approach is very fit. India, according to the reality, thousand years, multi-religious sort of uh, reality. Uh, the, the, I mean, community. community. Uh, several kingdoms uh, everywhere beside homegrown different religious tradition all major world religious tradition eventually sort of found their sort of land and then home, uh, uh, they their home and settled. Even like the Zorazuddin, the Persi, Pers, Parsi, they call Parsi, originally come from Persia. Uh, now today in India, one big city, Bombay, their population, whole population, less than 100,000. Even smaller than Tibetan refugee population. <laughs> Very small. They kept their own religion, that is Zorazutin. Always keep fire. No danger, no threat. And recently I met one uh, uh, European from Romania, he carries some research about the harmony, different religious tradition in India. And he told me, he really surprised one village, whole village, Muslim community, only three Hindu family, but no fear, no threat, very happily remain very close friendship. He's surprised. So that's India's sort of tradition. Thousand years, harmony among the different tradition. Uh, and India's constitution itself, because of that reality, constitution based on secularism. So that I usually, you see, the uh, sharing 
with people because some I used to friend from the West, some Christians, a little reservation about the word of secularism. And then also some Muslim friend, similarly. Uh, so the problem, some people believe moral principle must be based on religious faith. Then complication rise. So India, because of the, that reality, multi-religious sort of society, if uh, the moral ethics based on religious faith, then what religion? A lot of complication. Some say there is God, some say no God. A lot of complication. So avoid that. <laughs> Simply based on secular moral ethics. It is much easier, much better. Uh, that, is, that can be universal. Religious faith cannot be universal. Here, you see, I want to share you see, one thing. The, according to religious tradition, the concept of one truth, one religion, is very important. For individual level, that's very relevant in order to boost your own faith. But in the terms of community, several people, group of people, now that one truth, one religion concept, uh, not realistic. In terms of community, different people who have different sort of faith, and including non-believer. Then how can tell? one truth, one religion, about one's own religion is the only truth, only religion. Then how, how can force on other, you should accept my religion? Impossible. So therefore, realistically speaking, in the terms of community, several concept of several truth, several religion is relevant. Individual level, one concept of one truth, one religion is relevant. No contradiction because of individual case, one truth, one religion. In the terms of community, several truths, several religion. That's realistic. So there's no contradiction, isn't it? <laughs> so therefore, uh, whenever I had the opportunity you see, to talk uh, these things, then I very much sort of appreciate in this university, now one more because of the step. step forward about spirituality and healing. I think very good. So I really looking forward more progress, more activities in that field. So that I think within next few years I will return in order to check how much how much development. <laughs> so, in any way, in any way uh, I really appreciate, I really appreciate some other university, like Wisconsin University, and Stanford, Stanford University, Emory. and Emory University. As far as I know, these universities already, you see, carrying some program about the training of mind and how much effect on body, on mind. So now I found fourth university, that's University of Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota. So now, now future, I will mention four universities who really carry serious research work in that respect. So I very much appreciate, thank you. So that's all. Thank you. Um, to what you like to Some questions. Yes. Some questions. Questions. Please. <laughs> Please.
Pas ça. ま、ロータス。うん。で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で
only towards your friend, not your enemy. Because enemy's attitude is negative towards you. So the very basis of uh, compassion, not there. Now, when religious sort of uh, tradition, when we talk compassion, and including Buddhism, when we talk about compassion is not oriented their attitude, uh, but the being, as I mentioned earlier, the creature itself, regardless their attitude towards you. Their creature, their God's cre creation, same. So extend our love, compassion, uh, affection, like that. So that is uh, now not oriented their attitude, but rather themselves. For example, taking care, some kind of sort of uh, nurturing yourself. Not due to you, you yourself nice to, you, to yourself. No. This, spontaneously. Uh, spontaneously, you want happiness. You do not want suffering. So the sense of taking care comes. So others also, including your enemy, also have the same desire to overcome suffering, to achieve happiness, and also have the right. So on that basis, we can extend our compassion. So that compassion is unbiased. The previous compassion is biased. So previous compassion very much related with attachment. The later part of the compassion without attachment. Attachment very much focusing one thing, biased. So one time uh, in, uh, in Argentina, uh, one hour meeting, one Chilean physicist, quite well sort of known, famous sort of physicist, he mentioned at the meeting, his scientist, physicist, quantum physicist, uh, he mentioned but he should not develop attachment towards his own scientific field. That's really uh, marvelous. So, for example, my own case, I'm Buddhist, but I should not develop attachment towards Buddhism. If I develop attachment with Buddhism, then my mind becomes biased. biased. Through biased, mind cannot see the other's value objectively. So therefore, Buddhism never sort of has what, encourage has what, development of attachment. Attachment, compassion, two things. So in order to develop unbiased, infinite love and compassion, first you must detach equality to all enemy, friend. Enemy must reduce anger, distance feeling. Your friend side, detach, equal. Then develop the kasoda, unbiased sort of uh, compassion. And then also, you see, uh, it often, you see, people confuse the Buddhism and some other sort of religion. Uh, I think mainly Buddhism, you see, uh, sort of say, consider desire is something negative. But desire with attachment is negative. But desire with reason is, uh, we have to sort of develop like desire, well-being of other, Des desire to overcome one's own suffering. That's right. Desire uh, without a proper sort of, what's basis. it, a, basis. Uh, basis or foundation. That desire very much related with uh, attachment. 
So that kind of desire uh, must sort of reduce. And then anger. There are different varieties of anger. Anger with ill feeling. Anger out of compassion, sense of concern. There are differences. Even ego feeling. Egoistic sort of attitude uh, which lead Exploit. bully, exploit on other, look down other. That kind of egoism, egoistic attitude is negative. But another sort of ego, ego. Sort of ego feeling, the sense of strong self is necessary. In order to develop courage, willpower, you need sense of strong self. So in sort of, sort of mental world or emotional world, there are so many varieties. Uh, one emotion due to that sort of factor, factor. due to that factor, and it become more positive. Uh, even sort of faith, good, but uh, faith to wrong thing and dangerous, blind faith, like that. So faith with wisdom, with intelligence, very good. Faith, just attachment, negative, like that. So there are so many varieties. Now, next question. They do. Two, they do. Yes. Hmm? Um, this, question is, this question is from a nine-year-old. Nine-year-old, oh. um, Eva Nerison. If you could completely solve one problem in the world, what would that be? I don't know. <laughs> I think, I think in reality, there are so many varieties of problems. So just one person, you see, cannot solve these problems. All over six billion human beings have the responsibility to tackle these problems. Oh, I think half joke, one problem I myself can easily solve. That's uh, too much thirsty uh, uh, or hungry. And then uh, I drink a lot and I eat something, solve that problem. <laughs> that is very easy. <laughs> um, yes, next. What role do you see the internet playing in helping people to experience and discover one heart one mind and one universe. What can we do to further this role? I think internet, I think one of the very advanced sort of communication, right? Okay. Uh, and I think basically, I feel human mind, in order to develop human mind, sort of more complete form, we need a lot of information. Uh, just one information, one-sided information, very harmful. So we need variety of information. One factor, one say good, one say bad. We need both concepts. Then give us opportunity to investigate by yourself. So the, uh, now today, I think, Era, sorry, information era, survey. Oh, it's wonderful. I think because of that, I think a lot of positive change take place on this planet. Unlike, you see, uh, say, early part of 20th century, or even middle, also mid part, right, of 20th century, uh, less information, then sometimes unnecessary emotions sometimes develop. So more information, more clear picture about the whole world, uh, immense help. 
That's good scholar. So now I always is telling uh, my was when I met you see uh, press meeting, I always is telling them the media people should have long nose like elephant nose <laughs> and should smell front and important is behind what is going on. That's very, very important. Uh, the provided, mm, and the thorough investigation, what is happening, what is going on, then inform public, provided honestly, truthfully, unbiasedly, objectively. That's very important. So, So now, I think particularly democracy society, democratic society. I'm telling or expressing, world belongs to over six billion human beings, not government, not one particular religion. Like, like the United States belongs to people of the United States, not uh, Democratic Party or Republican Party. <laughs> so, so therefore, so therefore, the the govern the country. Uh, Say, over because the American population now? 300. One, more than? 300. 300 million. No. no. So, all 300 million, you see, uh, together control or govern your country, impossible. So, best way through election. Democratically elected government is really uh, by the people, for the people, really, they sort of, what's the uh, the best way, best system to govern your own country by people is the democratic system. So, in order to uh, carry democratic system, sort of according Efficient. moral principle, efficiently, uh, efficiently, efficient, not only efficient but with moral principle. Sometimes, uh, constitution, constitution, very good. Everybody under law, equal. Yes, this, this country, really, you see, practice that. However, however, sometimes human brain is so clever. <laughs> Even system, very good, but some way, a little, little different things also happen, isn't it? Uh, therefore, the media people, here, media people need make clear what is wrong, what is the corrupted mind, what is the corruption, where corruption going on. That's media people must investigate, not government sort of agent, but media people, the public sort of organization, must sort of investigate and make clear. So in this field, internet, I think very important role. And then also, I always is telling the media people, they also have the very, very important role to make more awareness a uh, certain sort of point which we usually neglected, like moral ethics, these things. So I usually is telling, telling them. So therefore, I think they, they sort of uh, new sort of Medium. technology, Long the information uh, is really wonderful. And of course, if you use wrong way, it also sometimes you see, may, may create more trouble. But I think the, as far as you carry honest, truthful, transparent, then more sort of information, better. If you have something to hide, then difficult. If you carry hypocrisy, hypocritic way, then uh, you have to be very, very cautious. <laughs>
Yes, next question. Um, this is the final question. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you, do you think the world is getting better or worse? And why? Better. Reason. Not only just, not only just my observation. Uh, 1996, the end of 20th century, I had opportunity audience with late Queen Mother of England, her own age, 96. She born, I think, at the, at the beginning of uh, I think beginning of the 20th, 20th century. So she observed whole century almost whole century. So then I asked her, uh, since you observed the, almost the whole century, so world becoming better or worse or same? Without hesitation, she mentioned to me, better. Reason. When she was young, the concept of human right or right of self-determination not there, not talking. But nowadays, human right and right of self-determination, these now become universal. She made example, these two, an indication the world becoming better. Now I think from my own view, viewpoint, in early part of 20th century, nobody talked about the importance of ecology. Now, uh, many people really showing genuine concern about ecology. It's wonderful. Even, oh. Even sort of political party, Green Party. I often, you see, uh, I was joking when I met this Green Party in New Zealand or some other country. Uh, I jokingly telling them, if I remain uh, in that sort of country, uh, I will join your party, Green Party. <laughs> so in any way, these are, I think, a sign of more mature. And then also, I think among the scientists, also now looking more seriously about mind. Previously, scientists hard science, only thing which can measure, which can calculate. Mind, feeling is something different. Now, the modern science slowly advancing, showing interest about what is consciousness, what is the relation between brain and mind. And then also, Then also, I think, among the religious believers, uh, the Pope, Rome, the, uh, what's it, the, His Holiness, John, John Paul. Polish Day. John Paul. John Paul. The second time. The Assisi meeting. Invite leader of different Christian denomination and also Buddhist, some Hindus. So that also signs of progress. Now, one religion, one truth, gradually change several truth, several religion, religions rather than religion. Right. So these are, I think, clear sign of more civilized, more progress. I think the one our own experience, one I think education, really make a tremendous sort of contribution, widening, opening our mind, looking at a more holistic way, holistic. What do you think? And then, then I think a uh, word of compassion. In previously, in a political, politician sort of statement, I think word compassion, uh, no seat, no, no, no place. place. The later part, 
among the politicians' sort of statement, I remember one time Mrs. Thatcher, one of her sort of statement, mentioned compassion. Oh, and then nonviolence. And talking, I think in 20th century, uh, concerned scientists or concerned sort of officials of government, you see, with full enthusiasm to build nuclear weapon. Now people talking how to reduce, how to reach total ban of nuclear weapon. These are, you see, uh, science, science of progress, right? Yeah. Progress. Now I want to share uh, uh, one sort of silly thing. The ladies, particularly ladies, you see, who take really care about your physical beauty, <laughs> external beauty. And also, I think because of uh, many sort of interest about it today, because cosmetics rare. Cosmetics. So cosmetic business also quite sort of strong. Mm. <laughs> now, uh, external beauty and internal beauty, out of these two, internal beauty is more important than external beauty. Uh, so, so the, the, uh, now in, uh, in my past experience, uh, some of my very close friend, when my first visit, they have, uh, I mean, uh, their wife meet together. Then after a few years, second visit, new wife. Uh, then third, fourth visit, another new wife. <laughs> I think, of course it is freedom. It is free. Uh, without children, okay. With children, it's quite serious matter. So these, why these things happen? They marry on the basis of external beauty without knowing internal beauty. You know, that's the problem. So therefore, yeah. So, please pay more attention about inner beauty as much external beauty. Thank you.